Now that you've been introduced to the concept of scales and chords, it only seems right that we should dive headlong into actually learning some scales. So, to begin with, I've deliberately chosen a scale that's the building block of countless songs and melodies, and is the perfect place to start. It's a scale that we call the major scale. OK, to begin with, I'm going to show you how to play a C major scale. Now, this particular scale only contains the natural notes, so basically we haven't got to worry about any notes that are flat or sharp. It's called a C major scale because we're going to start the scale from the note of C. If, for example, we were to start a major scale on a D, we'd refer to it as a D major scale. And the naming of scales really is that simple. It's the note we start on, followed by the scale's name. Now, here's some useful information. The note that we begin any scale on is called the root note. So, the root note of our C major scale is the note of C. Hopefully by now you should be associating the third fret of your A string with the note of C. So, let's start here, but fret it with your second finger and just allow your remaining fingers to comfortably hover over the other frets, just like this. Starting from the C, let's now learn to play a C major scale. I'm going to play it slowly and say the note names as I play up through the scale, and I suggest you try and copy how I'm using my fingers to fret each of the notes. With your second finger on the C, all of the other notes of the scale will fall into this 4th fret area. OK, let's give it a try. The first note, or root, is a C. The second note is a D. Next, we move up a string and fret the third note, which is an E. Moving up a semitone, or another fret, is the fourth note, F. Going up two frets, we find the fifth note, which is a G. Moving up another string is the sixth note, an A, played using the first finger like this. Up another two frets to the seventh note, B. And finally, up another semitone brings us to the eighth note, another C. But, as you can see, this time is played up an octave. Let's just repeat that again, but this time a little quicker. Play and say the note names with me, and for now, we'll keep things simple by just going up the major scale, starting on C and ending up on a C, but up the octave. I'll repeat this sequence three times, OK? After four. One, two, three, four. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C. G, A, B, C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, don't panic if you're making mistakes or finding the fretting of individual notes difficult. As you play up through the scale, just try to use the skills and techniques we've covered so far and with a little time, it should begin to feel easier. By all means, please feel free to rewind and repeat any of the exercises until you feel comfortable and you can play them with absolute confidence. Now that we've learnt how to play up a C major scale, it only seems right that we should now learn to play the sequence of notes, but in reverse. So, starting from our octave C with the little finger, let's give this a try. Once again, say the note names as you play, as this will really help to cement your knowledge of the fingerboard. OK, I'll repeat the sequence three times. So, after four. One, two, three, four. 
C B A G F E D C C B A G F E D C C B A G F E D C By focusing individually on playing the scale first up and then back down, you're actually beginning to develop another important component of successful bass playing. It's something we call muscle memory. The more you practice and play through songs or exercises, you'll find that your fingers begin to move instinctively to their next position with little to no actual thought from your part. It's kind of like they're on autopilot. And believe me, you really know you've learned something when you don't actually have to think about doing it. The key to developing muscle memory is, in itself, actually quite simple. Learn to practice things slowly at first and keep repeating the exercise or phrase until it feels really natural under the fingers. When you've achieved this, you'll find that your fingers will begin to know where they should be, and only then is it time to start thinking about speeding things up. You've heard it before, but don't try to run before you can walk. With time, you'll be playing things that at first seem difficult to achieve, but when you start committing these to muscle memory, they'll eventually happen naturally. Now, couple your muscle memory with great technique and you're onto a winning combination. Bass lines and ideas can flow with the minimum amount of effort. Remember, move forward knowing that there is no substitute to hard, dedicated practice. So, let's see if we can make use of this muscle memory and look at playing the C major scale up and down. Again, we'll play along with a metronome, but this time I'm going to increase the tempo slightly to 70 beats per minute. To help the scale feel better with the metronome, I'd like us to play the octave C twice. Once as the last note on the way up, and then again to begin the scale back down. OK, this time we'll play the C major scale up and down four times to really put into place what we've learned so far. Again, after four, one, two, three, four. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Hopefully you can begin to see that playing the major scale creates a shape across the fingerboard. And I believe that beginning to recognise and associate these shapes with scales, and of course chords, can help speed up the learning process. So, just to finish with, I'd just like to show you another shape that we can use to play the C major scale. Learning to play the same things using different shapes or positions is something that I encourage every student to develop, and it's exercises like this that really help us to unlock the notes across the fingerboard. OK, play along with me and copy how I play up and down through the C major scale, but this time we're going to start with our index finger on the root note, like this. So, there's our C, moving up two frets to a D. Now, this is where things change slightly. We stay on the same string and move up another two frets to E. Next, we move up a string and fret the F with our index finger like this. Again, another two frets up and we're on G. Okay, same as our previous string, 
up another two frets from the G, and we find our sixth note, A. And we finish the scale on the G string as before, playing the notes B and C. Now, follow me as I play it back down. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, and back to the root note C. Well done. We've covered a lot in this session, and I'd really like you to work on using these two shapes to play the C major scale. Once you've practiced and know the scale inside and out, have a go and see what musical ideas, tunes, or bass lines you can create just using that scale. After all, we don't want to play scales. We actually want to play music, don't we? Okay, I'll see you soon.